I'm now wearing the Mars analog spacesuit. Um, this is our spacesuit. It's made from common things you can get at Home Depot. And we use it for outreach and to simulate the problems that people encounter wearing spacesuits. Um, you can see there's a backpack, a helmet, and so forth. Now, I would actually suffocate without the fan that's in the backpack operating right now. Even though this is not a vacuum sealed spacesuit, um, the airflow through these uh, tubes without the assistance of a fan is not adequate and carbon dioxide will build up in the suit. So you get a feel for the problems that an astronaut would encounter. Now this is actually a much lighter suit and much easier to wear than a real spacesuit, which is a huge, heavy um, thing that you wear. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about I'm going to give you a demonstration about using speech recognition for astronauts wearing spacesuits. Patrana, say hello. Hello. My name is Patrana. I'm an artificial personal assistant who talks to you in spoken English and operates computer applications for you easily, comfortably, and enjoyably, giving you free use of your hands and freedom of movement. I was created at the research lab of GFT Group Incorporated. Next slide. Patrana, next slide. Okay. All right, so here's the outline of my talk. I'm going to talk a little bit about the planet Mars. I'm going to talk a little bit about the exploration of Mars by human beings, by astronauts in suits. I'm going to talk a little bit about how we might make that an easier process by using speech recognition as part of the spacesuits and systems. And I'll talk a little bit about our Mars analog spacesuit and some tests that we've done combining speech recognition with the analog suits. Patrana, next slide. Okay. So here is a very commonly used picture of the planet Mars. Um, this is a mosaic image that's made from hundreds of pictures that were taken of Mars by Mars Global Surveyor. Mars Global Surveyor is a, is a probe which is orbiting Mars, and it goes from the North Pole to the South and back again. So the planet is actually turning underneath the probe as it orbits. This is the same way that surveillance satellites work on Earth. So you can eventually survey the entire surface of Mars. You can photograph or image every uh, square mile of the Martian surface. Patrana, next slide. Okay. Now here we have a, a common depiction of um, astronauts on Mars, what it might be like. In the center, we see a pressurized rover. This is a very common concept. So here the astronauts have probably landed somewhere anywhere from miles to hundreds of miles away. And they've driven to a location to do some kind of research, probably some kind of geology, maybe looking for life, something like that. And we have a couple astronauts um, in spacesuits. Um, now, if you look at the foreground, the main astronaut on um, this side, what's um, to my left here, um, you'll see that he has what appears to be a display on his wrist. There's probably supposed to be a keypad there. So the concept of a wrist computer is a very common concept that you see in paintings and, and depictions like this and also in movies. But in actuality, it probably wouldn't work very well because of the harsh Martian environment. It would probably cause it to fall apart. Anything that's exposed to the exterior environment on Mars is at great risk of falling apart. Most missions to Mars are going to be several months in length, so any equipment has got to hold up for a long period of time. Patrana, next slide. Okay. So, so what are the problems for human explorers? It's very difficult to operate computers and other equipment wearing a spacesuit. Um, you get a little bit of feel of it from what I'm wearing, but a, a, an astronaut will be wearing gloves. They'll be completely enclosed in a pressurized suit, so it's very hard to do things. Uh, Mars is very cold. It has um, um, almost no atmosphere. It has bright ultraviolet light. It's what causes sunburn on Earth, but on Earth we're protected by the atmosphere. So the ultraviolet light that reaches us even when we get sunburn is a fraction of what's at the surface, you know, before the atmosphere. Mars is very dusty, so the dust will get into any exposed mechanical parts, keypads, trackballs, switches, anything like that is at risk 
of being damaged or destroyed by the dust. Um, you'll encounter this problem also in deserts or areas like that. Uh, this in fact happens at the Mars Desert Research Station that the Mars Society does, which is a very dusty environment. So the bottom line is any external equipment, computers, whatever, would be very likely to fall apart. Petrana, next slide. Okay. So one, one way to deal with this problem that's been proposed many times, and there's been various research on, is to use speech recognition. So you talk to your equipment and it does what you ask. Um, if you use speech recognition, you can um, put your display inside of the spacesuit, like a heads-up display that a pilot wears. So there's no um, display out here, right here on your wrist, for example, that's going to fall apart or anything like that. It's all inside the helmet. And similarly, you can use motion sensors like this one to control to be your pointing device. So this is a state-of-the-art um, pointing device. And you can see that I have very precise control with this unit. So I can trace out the lines of the letters and so forth. So I have very fine control. So a similar sensor could be built into my glove, basically. Petrana, next slide. Okay. So this is a more a depiction. I'm not wearing the, the body suit, but in our full getup, um, which we do for shows and things like Baycon and so forth, um, we actually have these um, these suits to make it look even more believable and also more simulate the issues with wearing a spacesuit. Petrana, next slide. Okay. So, as I said, the main function of the Mars Analog Spaces is, is to simulate the difficulties of wearing a spacesuit. Um, what we've done to try to study and, and look at what we can do with speech recognition today, with the current state of the art technology, is to put a wireless microphone, which is inside the helmet right now, and allows me to talk to uh, by a laptop. And that way we can simulate what it might be like for an astronaut. Now, the astronaut would have probably have his speech recognition pro computer would actually be in the backpack. And similarly, he wouldn't need a, a projector display like this. He would have a heads-up display inside of his suit. Those are all pretty expensive things, so we can use kind of off-the-shelf components to simulate what it would be like for the astronaut. So there are actually some advantages to using spacesuits with speech recognition. Uh, current speech recognition technology is susceptible to background sounds and noise, much more so than human speech recognition. Um, people have much better ability to recognize speech than any current program. With a spacesuit, however, this spacesuit, or simulated spacesuit, actually muffles the sound. So it's hard for me to hear you out there. But it means that it protects the microphone from external noises, so I have a controlled environment. I can make sure that it's quiet inside of here. And speech recognition can adapt to the fan noise. So the bottom line is it's actually easier to do speech recognition inside a spacesuit than say in an open room. Petrana, next slide. Okay. 